Hey there, this is Unmesh from Pixel Perfect, and today we're gonna learn how to fix blur caused by motion, or in other words, motion blur. This can be caused due to a variety of reasons. Maybe your camera shook while you were taking the picture, or maybe your subject moved. And the way we fix that is by telling Photoshop three things. So we tell Photoshop, hey Photoshop, you need to fix a motion blur. This is not any other type of blur, this is motion blur or blur caused by motion. Secondly, we need to tell Photoshop, okay, so if I move it this way and I capture an image and in the image there is a motion blur in this direction, we need to tell Photoshop, okay, so the motion happened by, let's say, 45 degrees, okay? We need to tell Photoshop the angle. Number three, we need to tell Photoshop, so the motion happened by the distance. So the motion happened by, let's say, three centimeters. But if we tell Photoshop three centimeters, it won't understand. Why? Because centimeter is a physical unit of distance. Keep in mind that we are dealing with a digital image. Now, what is the digital unit of distance? So if it moved this much inside the image, which is a digital image, we will have to say, okay, it moved by, let's say, 10 pixels, right? So three things. Number one, this is a motion blur that you need to fix. Second, we need to tell Photoshop the angle. Third, we need to tell Photoshop the distance. And we will learn super cool ways to exactly figure out all of that. However, this is very different from fixing the blur caused by focus mist. So if you want to learn how to do that, you can check out this video. Now this will be an easy fix and will be fun to do, but I always hope that you get it right in camera. So without any further ado, let's get started. So here we are in Photoshop and before we begin, I just wanted to let you know that there's a complete dedicated filter just for fixing motion blur and that is called shake reduction as the name suggests. So if you go to filter, sharpen, there is this shake reduction, but we are not going to use it today because personally, I don't like shake reduction because it's first of all, terribly slow. Go ahead and try it. It's very, very slow at this moment. Secondly, it's super complex. And personally, I don't like the results created. We're going to use something fast, exciting, and highly customizable. So first of all, if you want to go ahead and download this photo and follow along, check the links in the description. Let's zoom in and have a look at the image. All right. Now, as you can see, there is a little bit of camera shake. As you can see, everything has been moved. If only a section has been moved due to the subject moving, then we can of course mask it. But have a look, everything has moved in around this direction. So step number one would be determining the angle, or in other words, the direction. So we need to tell Photoshop the direction in terms of angle. And the way we do that very easily, here's the trick, all you need to do Click and hold on the eyedropper tool. There's a tool called the ruler tool, all right? Select the ruler tool. And then you just click and draw a line along the direction of the motion. So the motion happened in this direction as you can see from the image. So I'll just click and drag and try to be as accurate as possible, all right? So I will try to align this according to the motion. And I guess this is pretty perfect so i'm going to stop at that now once you stop at that have a look here this is the angle a stands for angle so this ruler is angled at 45.8 so keep that in mind note it down we're going to use that later second step is determining the distance of movement how much it moved when the blur was created so when the shutter opened it was probably here and when the shutter of the camera closed, it was here. And that's why we had this blur. Maybe the shutter speed was not enough. All right, so let's have a look at it. We start measuring from here and we stop right there. Let's see. So it says 10, which means 10 pixels. So the angle was how much? 45 point something. So we'll round it off to 46. And the length, as you can see, L1 is 10, which means 10 pixels. We must also do it in a couple other areas as well. Just to make sure we are correct. It's 10 here as well. 10.82, round it off to 10. I know 11 is closer, but 
the previous one said 10. All right, let's see this one. This around is 8.9.22. Just make sure, just it's 10 is fine. All right, so it's 10. Let's get back to the move tool. We just measured everything that we needed to. So step number one was determining the angle. Step number two was determining the distance. Step number three is sharpening. This is where we dial in all those information. Make sure the background layer is selected and then press Ctrl or Command J to make a copy of it. You can also name it Sharpen 1. Okay, great. Now we're gonna use smart sharpen, yes. But before we do that, let's convert this into a smart object so that we can change the values later. Go to filter, convert for smart filters, hit okay. All right, now this is a smart object as you can see by the logo right over there. Then go to filter, sharpen, smart sharpen. Now, what did we discuss? We need to tell Photoshop that this is a motion blur. So we need to go ahead and select the motion blur. Now, everything is already adjusted because I did practice before recording this tutorial. So let me just cancel all of this, all right? Let me just bring everything back to normal. All right, suppose this was the thing. We need to fix the blur. So first, we need to tell Photoshop that this is a motion blur. So here, as you can see, remove, you need to select motion blur. Next, you need to dial in the angle. So what was the angle that we found out? 46. So let's dial in 46, it was already there. All right, now radius. Here we need to dial in the distance. So what was the distance? 10 pixels, right? So let's type in 10. Now always keep the amount first all the way to the right, which is 500% and then we can adjust that later. All right. You can also set reduce noise to around 10%. That's fine. You can adjust that later. It doesn't matter much. But now, as you can see, let's have a look at the before and after. So here's the before. Here's the after. This is okay-ish, but you know what? It's just not looking right. The edges, look at the edges. It's just not looking right. So this is the before. This is the after. Let's move in a little downwards. Let's see. Let's check it. Okay. Now let's play with the radius a little bit. Let's try increasing it just a tad bit and see what's happening. See, these are coming closer. We will increase it a little more. And that's why I asked you to have the amount at 500 so that everything is exaggerated. And that way we can just make the lines proper. Now this is looking too bad. Let's move back a little. So 11.8 is fine. Now I think the amount is too much. So let's go ahead and decrease the amount. You can click and drag on the text where amount is shown. Let's gradually increase the amount. Yeah, this is pretty okay. Let's have a look at the before and after. So this is the before, see the blur, and this is the after, fixed. Now there are some advanced options as well. Now as you can see, the sharpening has been applied to the shadows as well, and that's why the shadows have an artifact, the black artifact. Is there a way to remove this? Yes, there is. If you go to the advanced, just click on this, we have more options, shadows and highlights. Let's keep it to the side so that you can see what's happening. Now, let's increase the fade amount on the shadows. See, it's gone from the shadows. Of course, you need to just play with the radius a little more. Maybe 12 is fine. And play with the amount a little more. As you can see, it's much more cleaner and we don't have that artifact. Let's have a look at the before and after. So this is the before, this is the after. But here's the thing, as we increase the fade amount of the shadows, the sharpening also goes away from certain areas. Have a look at it. So have a look at the eye, right? When the fade amount was zero, the eye was sharp. But as we increase the fade amount, the edges look fine, amazing, because the fade amount was zero. You see the artifact around the edges, right? When you increase the fade amount, the edges look amazing, but the sharpening goes away from the eyes. No problem. And that's where the next step comes in, that is refining. Of course, you can apply it without the shadows and the highlights and all that stuff, but refining is very important to figure out which areas need sharpening, okay? So let's keep the fade amount of the shadows at 100, hit okay and only apply it around the edges. So let's hold the Alt or Option, click on the mask button. Now the sharpening has been removed from every place. 
Now we need to take the brush and paint only around the edges with white. So make sure white is the foreground color, flow and opacity at 100 because we don't want any artifacts around the edge. Okay. All right, great. But what about the other areas, right? No problem at all. Just make a copy of Sharpen 1. Make sure Sharpen 1 is selected and then press Ctrl or Command J. Now, let's name it Sharpen 2. And in this case, we will invert the mask. Select the mask and then press Ctrl or Command I. It will sharpen the other areas. Now, that's the advantage of Smart Object. We can double click on it. Open up the properties, change any value. So this time we will decrease the fade amount of the shadows and the eyes are sharpened back again. Let's decrease the amount a little bit. Maybe let's increase the radius and see what happens. 13, 13 is fine for this. A little bit here and there is okay. Hit okay and zoom out just a little. I just wanted to show you this, the difference. So here is the after and here is the before, see? Before, after, before, after, fixed. Have a look now. Here's the before, here is the after. So easily fixed, but it does not invent the details. Any kind of computer sharpening always fakes it as of now at this point of technological development. Because come on, when you were taking the shot and when we moved the camera and there was a camera shake and we lost the details, your computer was not there to witness it and capture the details so that it will bring back the details in post. It's just not possible. So any kind of sharpening is just a fake illusion. By the way, if in your image only one object shows a motion blur, you can do this. You can group all of the layers that you created, press Ctrl or Command, hold it, select the other one, or you can also select the first one, hold the Shift key, select the last one if you have created a bunch of them, and all of them in the middle will be selected and then press Ctrl or Command G. Then you can hold the Alt or Option, click on the mask button, this creates a negative mask and then only paint on the areas which need sharpening. So you can take the brush, foreground color white and then you can only paint on the areas which would need sharpening if only that was the thing which moved. So that's something which you can do if only one object has moved. Now just a quick little recap. Step number one, determine the direction. Step number two, determine the distance. We do both of these by using the ruler tool. Once we have that in mind, step number three is sharpening using Smart Sharpen. Of course, you can go into shadows and highlights, which brings us to step number four, which is refining. So you can refine your sharpening in any which way you want. You can create masks, groups, and all of that. You can do selective sharpening. That's totally upon you. As simple as that. But I, again, as I always wish, please get it right in camera because this is all fake. I hope this tutorial helped you. And if it did, make sure to give us a like and also don't forget to subscribe and not just subscribe. Ring the bell so that you don't miss any other future tip, trick or tutorial. I would like to take this moment to thank all these nice and amazing people for supporting this channel on Patreon and helping keep Piximperfect free for everybody forever. Thank you so much for all your support. Thank you for watching. I'll see you guys in my next one. Till then, stay tuned and make sure that you keep creating.